Uh, what's up YouTube? Today I would like to check on whether the Sony XLR A3M, this unit right here, which also comes with the ECM XM1 microphone set, is still worth it in 2023. I got this unit because I thought it'd be awesome to have XLR inputs on my A7 IV and my ZV-E1. Yes, it's a little pricey. So for that price, I could make my ZV-E1 kind of look like an FX3 with the top handle. That's when I started noticing this unit kind of looks almost identical to the Sony XLR-H1, which is the top handle unit of the FX3. All the way up to, if you can see here, the layout of everything here, the XLR inputs. The only difference is pretty much, you know, from here on down, the design. But apart from that, it seems like they're recycling. So that leads me to the question, is this thing worth it? I fail to see concrete information on Sony's website. There is a switch, if we get focus on it, analog and digital. So the premise is, if you put this on digital, the signal is gonna go through the hot shoe and these specific proprietary terminals into the camera digitally. So the preamps are in this external unit far away from any electronics that can, you know, introduce noise uh, or any signal chain problem, which is a good thing. It's, you know, it's out of the camera. And so once the audio is digitized, it'll go straight into the camera in digital form. So there's no degradation from there on. And then the question that started coming up in my mind is, okay, so what kind of preamps do they use in here? And this connection, what kind of sound? Is it, is it 24 bit, 16 bit? Um, like all these questions are arising. So uh, I was trying to dig around, see what is going on, because I found it very odd that on Sony's own website, if you go to the specs of the, <laughs> I'll just call it the P3M. Okay, the P3M. Its own website does not display the, the, spe the audio specs until I went to Sony's Q&A helpguide.sony.net section where I guess they were forced to uh, reveal information. But still, the information is kind of sketchy. So the sampling frequency and bit rate says that this unit is 48 kilohertz, 16 bit, comma, 48 kilohertz, 24 bit, if your camera supports 24 bit audio recording. So first thing I do is I check, uh, does the Sony ZV-E10 record audio at 24 bits? Anybody, please correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm on Sony's website right now. And in the specifications, Oh, oh, actually audio recording, 48 kilohertz, 16 bit, LP, CM2, channel. See, here's the thing. The audio recording format says 48 kilohertz, 24 bit capable if using accessories that support four channel output 24 bit with the multi-shoe interface. I guess that's validation that this unit with 
the ZVE1 means that 24-bit audio is going through from here to the camera. But it feels like I'm kind of getting the runaround, so I guess we'll just have to try to see. So while we're at it, I thought it, we might as well compare it to... Um, so this is the... I cannot remember these names. The Sony, the standard microphone the P3M comes with, the ECM-XM1. It's a super directional, which I assume that's... They're trying to say super cardioid. Electric condenser microphone. Maybe they're not just very interested, but usually when I look at the specs of a microphone, I'd get a little bit more information than that, like a, you know, a frequency sensitivity graph or a polar pattern diagram or something. But okay, let's just give Sony the benefit of the doubt of this one. And it comes with this dead cat. Why do they why do they call these things dead cats? Like yes, I understand. But uh it could be a dead rabbit or rabbit tail. Couldn't they think of something a little bit more aesthetically like pleasing to the ears? Okay, so this is what comes with it, but might as well try um it with a better, more expensive microphone, like for example, the Rode NTG4. Or also, we could also try it with the Rode Mic Go 2, which I have been very pleased with recently. Like this small size, it packs a lot of power for the punch. And also this uh, Rode Mic to go. It's not the newest 32-bit uh, float version, but it served me well, and that's what I'm recording audio on right now. So, um, yeah, let me uh, reconfigure the camera, put it through its paces, and we'll see how it sounds. Just in case you're wondering, I am shooting in a different location from usual, so I am in my car right now, in this quiet test environment that I can find right now. Um, I'm going to go down into the nitty gritty on checking the noise floor of each configuration. So I hope I can figure something out. So this is the Rode Wireless 2 Go wireless mic. Let's check out the uh, waveform and the spectrograph here to see what is going on. Okay, so this is me talking very, very quietly. I'm almost whispering now. I wonder how the noise floor is doing. And then if I get excited and I'm like, yeah, what's going on, yo? Um, I hope I didn't clip that. So that was the Rode Wireless Go 2. I'm not using the lav pin, lav, because um, I'm too lazy. Uh, let's move on. <laughs> So now I am on the Sony XLR P3M with the included ECM XM1 microphone. I'm just going to use my iPhone to show you guys uh, the setup. So this is what it looks like right here. And I've set signal feed to the camera to digital. Um, I assume that that will send a 24-bit signal to the camera. And again, this is me speaking very quietly. Um, I'm speaking quietly and now I am whispering, whispering. Until I speak really loudly. And when I speak loudly, I don't know if I'm clipping or not. Um, I hope that auto uh, gain function is working well. We'll see. Okay, let's move on. So now we are on the Rode NTG4. Uh, the Rode NTG4 is a shotgun mic 
first available in 2015. So at the time it was 200. At the time it was 369 US dollars or it still is now. And it's an XLR only mic. So it's not one of those uh, newer mics that's aimed at uh, YouTubers, podcasters. This mic is made to be interfaced with a proper audio mixer, a preamp, whatnot. And its acoustical profile is line gradient and it is a super cardioid. So this is me uh, speaking very quietly, very quietly, and I am now whispering, whispering, whispering until I start screaming. Okay, um, I don't know if that uh, clipped. Hello? Anybody home? Hello? So now we are on the Rode Video Mic Go 2. Just like the Rode NTG4, I have it mounted like this instead of in the XLR P3W's shoe because the size is a little different. So now we're listening to the Rode Video Mic go to not going through the XLR P3M, but it's going directly into the 3.5 millimeter port of the ZV-E1. I have the gain set at 15. And at this point, I am talking very softly, softly. And now I'm whispering, whispering. I don't know if it's catching this. And now I'm speaking loudly, speaking fairly loudly. And I feel like an idiot. <laughs> okay, now I think it's time to go outside and see how these really work in a real world scenario. You know, I think I might as well go with the beefiest setup, which I would assume the best quality, I think would be to get the P3M and, you know, other YouTube spurs have mentioned this, but it just sucks that Sony, can't you play along with everyone else and, you know, <laughs> look at this. Yes, I know you can go on Amazon, get rubber, or you can just put gaff tape around. Um, but still. Also, I should have said this at the beginning, but with the standard configuration, You know, I should have said this at the beginning. One thing that does bother me about this unit, the XLR P3M, is the cheap feel to it. I don't know how to describe it. It's just... Hear that? And we have electrical contacts here. And so this single mounting point right here is holding the weight of the unit itself and the shotgun. And I guess that's why they have their proprietary mount so they don't have people mounting something like this 
on top that's gonna stick out more and with something like this on it because I don't really trust the material for a unit that's close to six hundred dollars I think Sony could have gave us you know a little bit more quality material you know something that's not too heavy but at least something that doesn't feel like it's gonna snap if I put just a little bit of excessive weight on it but let's see how it does yeah that's what matters more so I wonder how my voice is doing compared to like the background uh, noise here and there yeah that guy just bumped into a shutter with his bike I don't know how that sounded. And I am quickly running out of breath. I've got the Rode video mic to go attached directly to the camera now. And I'm just walking the same route. Let's go to that intersection over there where there's a little bit more uh, traffic and see how this mic does. I did, uh, it's attached directly to the camera right now and I did lower, oh, we've got this fan blowing in the background. Oh, and well, we got a dog here. I thought there'd be traffic, but not much. And yeah, this is just Chinatown at night. We've got a car passing by. Really not much to say. So uh, that was my walk around Chinatown. Short walk. But now I'm about three feet, roughly one meter away from the road NTG4. And I look forward to see how this sounds. Yeah, the car's going by. I hope my, my voice is getting uh, predominance over the background noise due to the NTG's side noise cancellation. We'll see. Okay, so <clears throat> let's check the metadata. Audio. PCM 48 kilohertz 16 bit. Damn. Sony, are you lying to us? How about this one? 16 bit. 16 bit. Okay, so they're all 16 bit. My subjective conclusion is that unless you really want to attach XLR microphones to your A7 IV or ZVE-1, so far I get the feeling that the Rode Video Mic to Go connected directly to the camera is the best option for casual vlogging. Or just casual shooting number one if you're gonna be holding the camera like this just the extra weight by having the p3m does get a little tiring after a while without any noticeable gain in quality number two I am pretty amazed with the sound quality of the road video mic to go what else um actually let me backtrack i think the best solution would be a combination of the rode video mic to go and the rode wireless to go or the newer wireless to go pro if you have both of those i think you are rock solid if you have the opportunity to, you know, mic someone up, use the wireless. If not, 
use the uh, video mic to go. Uh, it's only a hundred dollars and for a hundred dollars that's a lot of bang for the buck. That's just my personal opinionated opinion for now. Thanks for watching.